So we will take a look at the wait and notify. So we have two threads. We have two transactions or else we have two threads. Each thread is going to work on one particular object that is the account object. So you have an object created for account and this object has got some members here that is account number, holder and balance. So thread 1 and thread 2 will run parallelly to each other. Thread 1 acquires the lock on this account, this object. So it acquires the lock and then what it does? So it acquires the lock on the object. Read balance. What is the balance? 2000. See we are trying to withdraw 35,000. So it's checking whether withdraw amount is greater than balance. 35,000 is greater than 2000. So what it's going to do is, it's going to release the lock on that balance. So it is going to release the lock on object and it will be in the wait mode. How it releases the lock? It will call this method wait. When it calls the method wait, it will release the lock on the object and it will be in a passive state. It will not be executing any other piece of uh, lines. So when it releases the lock, there is this transaction 2 or thread 2 which is waiting, right? So it will acquire the locks. What is acquiring the lock? It will get the lock on this object and then it will read balance. What is the balance? 2000. Say it is updating the balance. Say it is doing a deposit of 40,000. So what will be the balance after this? 42,000. So it is updating the balance to 42,000 and then this will call the notify. So what notify does? Notify will trigger any other thread that is in the wait state on this particular object. So it will wake up this uh, particular thread and it will also release the lock. So it will release the locks on the account. So this wait thread, what it will do? It wants to withdraw 35,000. Is 35,000 greater than 42,000? No. So it will go and withdraw the amount, then it will release the lock and terminate. So this is wait and notify. So when you talk about notify, the important thing is when you say notify, it can notify only one single thread. Please have this in mind. When I notify, I can wake up only one single thread that is in the wait state. There can be three or four threads in the wait state, but only one single thread will be triggered and it will be, you know, going and acquiring the logs. So I went in for an animation to say this is the account balance, this is an object of type Satish, I mean of type account. What I am representing here in this uh, rectangle is the object, say there is a thread, it wants to withdraw 30,000. So what should be the first activity? It should lock the object. Once when it locks the object, it can go and enter the synchronized method for that object and then can perform the withdrawal. So when it is performing that withdrawal, what it checks is withdraw amount greater than balance. Withdraw amount is 30,000, balance is 20,000. So what it does, it calls the wait and then it goes into the passive state. So once when it calls the wait, what is the step? It releases the lock. Whenever wait is called, lock is getting released and then it is in the passive state. So there is another thread deposit, right? It wants to deposit something to this object. So what it should do first, it should acquire the lock. So it acquires the lock and then it will update this uh, amount. So it goes to 40,000. So once when it uh, updates, it will initiate, initiate notify. So you can see notify here. This method is going to call. So what notify will do? Notify will notify this waiting threads. So I just push this from here to here to tell you that this is waiting. See, it also releases the lock on the account object. So once when that thread gets the notification, it will wake up from the wait state, it will acquire the lock and then what it's going to do, it's going to try withdrawing 30,000. So it will again check is withdraw greater than balance, no. So it will go and withdraw, so when it withdraws, balance changes to 10,000. So once when the withdrawal is done, his work is done, so it will release the lock and then it will terminate. So when you notify, you can wake up only one single thread. So that is wait and notify. Very simple. So can you write code for this quickly? Can you write code for this? 
say we ask you to implement code how will you do so we'll have this class account please understand this it's very simple and uh, are you able to see this from the end all of you Is the font size okay so this class account we'll have a class account and in this class account i'm going to have only balance let's have this uh, source generate a constructor using fields and then uh, we'll generate this constructor so we'll get some input balance and then we'll initialize our balance we'll have two methods here one method is a public method that is uh, what this method is going to do is it's it's a withdraw method so we'll go and withdraw some amount right so we'll withdraw it and we'll get some withdraw amount here so it's in withdraw amount withdrawal should be synchronized why it should be synchronized for any one to go and withdraw you should first lock the object and enter this method so it should be synchronized so inside this method we'll give a sysout statement saying this is withdrawal just for outputs okay and then what check we have to do while we are withdrawing is the withdraw amount greater than the balance how will you check that while withdraw amount is greater than the balance should be allow him to withdraw should be allow the withdrawal while withdraw amount is greater than the balance no so how will you what what the thread does thread should go into the wait state right how will you call wait it's wait that's it see again wait is a method from your object class which is the root of all classes in java every class you implement extends the object class so that you should not give thread dot wait or thr2 dot wait or current thread dot wait nothing like that you just call wait so when i call wait what happens it releases the lock on the account and then it goes into the passive mode if balance is uh, greater than the withdrawal amount what we should do so what we'll do is this dot balance we have to you know this dot balance minus withdraw so we'll withdraw the amount if the balance is greater than the withdrawal amount that's it so for wait also we'll give a sysout statement saying we are in the wait state thread is waiting okay so we should have another method for deposits right so we'll have a public method so again deposit should also be a synchronized method so what is this deposit deposit is also a synchronized method and uh, you will deposit some amount so in deposit amount we'll have and uh, what will you do inside this i'll have a sysout message for our output so it's like i am inside deposit i am depositing and uh, this dot balance is equal to this dot balance minus plus what is that deposit amount right okay he is depositing and uh, once after depositing what the thread does it should notify whoever is waiting so how will it uh, notify you just call the method notify that's it so once when a deposit happens it will notify so this is all the two methods now i am going to create an object of account how will i create an object of account so it's new and uh, account name is say i am creating an object of type uh, satish uh, with uh, say the balance is 2000 initial balance an object of type account satish is created with a balance of 2000 the next thing is we have to have two threads parallelly one thread for withdrawing another thread for depositing so how will you create two threads this is thread 1 is equal to new thread and then you will have this new runnable uh, thing object inside so inside this what i am going to do is i am going to do satish dot object dot withdraw how much i am going to withdraw i am going to try withdrawing 30000 okay that's the withdraw amount and uh, we are done with thread 
we'll have another thread for depositing. How will you do? PHR2 is equal to new thread. We'll have this new runnable uh, object. Uh, this thread, what it's going to do? It's going to do satish.deposit. So satish.deposit, it's going to deposit some amount. Say it's depositing 40,000. One thread is withdrawing, one thread is depositing. When withdraw enters first in the synchronized method, balance is 2000, withdrawal is 30,000, so weight will be called. It will release the lock, so deposit will enter in, deposit the amount notified and then withdrawal will happen. So we will go and see how this one works. We will give some uh, messages here, say sys out, withdrawal happening. So to know how the output works, withdrawal happening. And uh, I am depositing, yeah, and then sys out notifying pets. So we will have some messages so that we understand our output. So I am notifying, let's say something like that. And uh, anything else we should have? See, it will ask us to have some throws declaration here and there, that's fine. And uh, anything else? Fine. We will also add the thread ID to know which thread is coming in. We will also display the thread ID. How will you display the thread ID? Thread dot current thread dot get ID. So which thread is inside my synchronized block? I can get that too. Likewise, uh, you know, a withdrawal happening. Which thread is withdrawing? That is thread dot current thread dot get ID. Fine. So I am just printing the thread ID too. I am depositing. Which thread is depositing? Thread dot current thread dot get ID. Notifying also that will do. Okay. That's it. So we have done all our code. Let's come to our main program. What we have to do is we have to do thread one dot start. We are starting a thread one, we are starting a thread two. And we'll also join the results and finally print the final balance in our main. So it is three archer one dot join and uh, thr2.join and in the final you know thread is main is also a thread so i'm just going to print satish.balance after both these threads complete that will be a final balance so let's make make our mathematics uh, here how much i am depositing how much i am withdrawing so what will be the final balance 2000 is the initial balance i am depositing how much 40000 so the total deposits there will be 42,000 out of which I am trying to withdraw 30,000. So the final balance should be 12,000. Are you all clear with the math here? So let's go and run this. Hope this one works. Withdrawal price. The thread ID is 10. It's trying to withdraw. But 30,000 it's trying to withdraw. Balance is only 2,000. So it goes to the weight mode. So when it goes to the weight mode, it release, release, releases the lock. So once when it releases the lock, deposit comes in, acquires the lock. So it enters the synchronized method and then it says I am depositing thread 11. And it is also notifying, thread 11 is notifying. When it notifies, thread 10 starts withdrawing. You see, thread 10 comes back from the weight state, acquires the lock on the object and then it starts executing. From where it starts executing, thread 10 will, uh, you know, it will get a trigger, right? So it, this weight will be over. So it will start executing this statement, withdrawal happening current thread. That's what you are seeing here. So how much it is uh, withdrawing? 30,000 from 42,000. Finally, both these threads terminate. So when both these threads terminate, thread1.join, thread2.join is achieved. What is the final, final balance? 12,000. So that is how wait and notify works. Is that clear? So there are certain questions asked. If there are two threads, each with a withdrawal amount of 35,000 and there's only one deposit thread and there's one notify method, which thread will wake up? Which thread will get the notification? I told you, I told you notify can wake up only one single thread. There can be two threads waiting for withdrawal, but only one thread will be Trigger. Which thread? That's an arbitrary choice. It may be based on the thread priority that is waiting or it will be based on the waiting time for the thread.
right it happens internally by the jvm schedule is it clear notify all there is one more method notify all we'll see what is this wait and notify all so you know the answer for this if two or three threads are waiting on one particular object when i send notify all all the threads uh, uh, you know they will wake up all the threads will wake up and then only one thread will go and lock the object so we'll uh, see some animations here so we have an account satish account with balance 20000 withdraw thread comes in what it wants to withdraw 30000 what is the first step acquire the lock on the object next is try to update this so the condition is withdraw should not be greater than balance but withdraw is greater than balance so he will call wait so when he calls wait this lock should be released so there is one more thread that is coming in withdraw this is also a withdraw he is trying to withdraw 35000 so for withdrawing what it should do lock the object try to withdraw 35000 but there is only 20000 so what is the condition here when the balance is greater than see when the withdrawal amount is greater than the balance you have to go to wait and you have to release the lock another thread deposit thread is there this guy comes in he deposits 35000 so what how will he deposit first acquire the lock update the deposit so 35 plus 20 will go to 55000 so once when deposit is done you will call notify all now notify all is also a method from the object class so when he doesn't notify how many threads are waiting on two threads so you see so notify all just triggers both these threads so both these threads will come out of their wait state and see once when he notifies he also release the lock on the account so both these threads will come out of their wait but they will be competing for the synchronized block no so who will enter the synchronized block someone should acquire the lock on the object so say one thread acquires the lock another one is waiting waiting the sense not in the wait mode just uh, waiting to enter the synchronized block so he acquires is withdrawal greater than the balance no so he can go and subtract 30 from 55 what is the amount here 25000 so he has done his work what next he will do release the lock this guy is waiting right for the synchronized section so what he will do he will acquire the lock he wants to withdraw 35000 from 25000 so the check withdrawal is greater than balance so what will happen he will again go to wait mode he will release the lock that release lock animation alone i have not done but anyway you imagine that this lock vanishes finally okay so that is notify all so very simple right so can you write code for this now you have to understand that though notify all goes to many threads only one thread will go and acquire the lock and execute other thread should wait because lock on the object when it is there other threads cannot enter the synchronized section please start writing code so there's no big change we have the withdrawal we have the deposit the same thing and uh, here we'll have 2000 to be the balance and we'll have two threads one thread it try to withdraw 30000 we'll have another thread this will also trying to withdraw right let's have two threads this will also withdraw satish dot withdraw so this is trying to withdraw say some another 30 say 40000 first thread 30000 next thread 40000 what is the actual balance only 2000 so you should you also have this third thread what is this thread deposit thread so we we'll have thread thr3 is equal to new thread and then new runnable So inside this, what we'll do is we'll do a deposit. Satish dot deposit. I have already two thousand. So what I will deposit is I will deposit forty thousand. Is 
It will ask us to surround it with some try catch. It's fine. So thread three dot uh, start. We'll start all the threads. Three threads we have. Ehr three dot join. Finally, printing the balance. There's one change. Instead of notify, I'm going to notify all the threads that are waiting. So what I will do here is capital A and LL. So once after the deposit done, it can notify all the threads that are waiting. Obviously, these two threads will wait, I guess, because one is trying to withdraw thirty thousand from two thousand, another one is trying to withdraw forty thousand from two thousand. So both will go to wait, and then we'll deposit forty thousand. So the balance will go to forty-two thousand. Say one thread, if it withdraws thirty thousand, balance will be only twelve thousand. Whereas the another thread, if it tries, it will again go to wait. If you are not so clear, you can do the mathematics and be clear now. So one thread initial balance is two thousand. One thread withdraws thirty. Another thread forty, and there's a deposit of forty. So when a deposit happens, final balance will be forty-two thousand. Say this thirty thousand withdrawal happens, so balance will be twelve thousand. Again, this thread tries to withdraw forty thousand, so balance is lesser than withdrawal amount, so it will go to wait. That's where our process will end. So let's. Uh, Run this one out. So thread one tries to withdraw thirty. It's in the waiting mode. Thread two tries to withdraw some forty thousand, I guess. So balance is only two thousand. So it goes to the waiting mode. There's a deposit happening. So thread three comes in, acquires the lock, deposits how much forty thousand, and it is notifying these two threads. So one thread, thread eleven comes in, acquires the lock, is withdrawing. So how much it's withdrawing? Say it's withdrawing forty thousand. So remaining balance is only two thousand. The another thread starts acquiring the lock and then is tries withdrawing, but then it cannot withdraw thirty thousand when the balance is only two thousand. So it goes in the wait mode. So what we understand from here is both the threads were triggered and only one thread was able to occupy the Lock and withdraw another thread since the balance was uh, less. It's still in the wait state. Is this clear? It's waiting there. No. So until some other thread again comes and deposits and notifies, it will not come out of the wait state. Yeah. So if. So that's a very good question. So we are putting something in indefinite wait here. So while you are coding applications, it is the programmer's responsibility to see to that something doesn't go out and end up in an indefinite wait. It's your responsibility to design applications that doesn't end up like this. Okay. So notify, notify all. Everything is run, done. deadlock in java there can also be a deadlock happening there might be a deadlock happening what is deadlock say i have two objects like satish object that i have created there can be an object i and an object say this is an object this is an object there are two threads running parallelly both these thread acquire lock on objects say this thread acquires lock on i this thread acquires lock on j at the same time The next step is after acquiring lock on I, it is holding on to the lock. It is asking for a lock on J. So this thread wants a lock on J. Whereas who is who has lock J? This guy has lock J. Whereas this guy is requesting a lock on which one? I. So both of them are locked on each other. So that's going to be a deadlock. so again you should not uh, you know end up in uh, situations like this we will not uh, venture into details like how will you write code to prevent uh, all such things a, a deadlock might happen that's what i'm telling you see when he requests uh, acquires lock on i and he requests a lock on j maybe thread one was given priority and he was he was given locks on both these things maybe thread 2 was given priority and he was given the locks on both these things but in case if one lock was for this guy and one lock for for that guy and they start waiting for the other objects then a deadlock might happen so in the exams they can give you a scenario and say identify whether a deadlock will happen or not
we just say deadlock happens or not. 